So, the lessons we've learned. When selecting a winter base, it's important to look at the cost of marinas. Mainland Spain often works out way cheaper than French Mediterranean ports or the offshore islands. It's often worth shopping around. And check carefully what's included in the quote. Some will give you a base net figure, which can increase by half as much again when various taxes are added, plus extras such as electric, water and Wi-Fi. Because these hadn't been explained to me when I pre-booked a berth in Mallorca, I ended up paying a daily rate literally three times what I was paying in Ibiza, where all the so-called extras were included in the quoted price. And remember that if you're away for a couple of months, your home marina in the UK will often refund berthing fees for those months. When choosing a wintering destination, ease of access is vitally important. If it becomes a chore getting to and from your boat, then you're less likely to use it. So the cost and regularity of flights is important. And remember that airlines' winter schedules to many European resort areas may be far more limited than the summer. It's always a balance. What to do once you're there is also a personal consideration. Marinas in some locations have the town centre within walking distance, with enough variety to satisfy even the most hardened shopaholic. And dining experiences are countless. Other locations may be far more remote and rural. Often marinas are in locations that might be major holiday destinations in the summer, but that virtually close up in the winter. You want to make sure that the base you choose is an all-year-round location. Look at whether there's already a wintering community. Always a good sign. Pilot guides of the area can often provide useful hints about this. So, do look carefully at the marina you're selecting. Cartagena also serves as a great example of choosing wisely when selecting a long-term winter base compared to marinas just a few miles along the coast. From the pilot guide, the nearby inland sea of Mar Menor had sounded an ideal alternative. It looks like we're going into middle Russia. 12 miles by 6, with several islands and the option of a number of marinas. Undoubtedly a great summer cruising destination, Mar de Menor, now virtually closed up for the winter, seemed on a grey February day like a scene from zombie apocalypse. Look at the local facilities. Services such as a boatyard where you can do your annual haul out may also be worth considering. It's far more fun anti-fouling the hull on a warm Mediterranean afternoon than in a biting British winter wind. Consider the cruising area available. One good example is Rota on the Bay of Cadiz. Combining the benefit of being close enough to the city of Cadiz to make the most of all those advantages, the town itself has a charm that owes much to its Moorish architecture. To the east, the whole of the Algarve and Andalusia are calling. While to the west, it's a relatively short hop to Gibraltar, the gateway to the Med. Whether you have your boat transported by road to a marina on the continent and you use it as little more than a floating holiday home, or whether you've embarked on a seaborne adventure and once at your chosen destination you use the boat to explore new regions, ports and harbours, Whatever your approach, I can promise you one thing. Wintering in the sun is addictive, so be prepared to do much more of it in the future.